Good evening, everyone. This is uh, Evangelist and Apostle Misha Softier, and I'm welcoming you to tonight's Tuesday edition of Study in the Word. We've got a good one this evening because we're going to talk about the amazing prophecies of Jesus, okay? And so I can't get into all of them tonight, but I'm going to get into a significant uh, uh amount of them in a book that I always like to use when I minister to uh, other to Jews. Now, this is good for everyone, but me being a uh, born Jew myself, okay, um, I know that um, uh, my fellow Jews that are still waiting for the Messiah, they don't read the New Testament, okay? So, they read the Old Testament, okay. They read the the Torah, the and the, the 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 book of the law, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and so it it's amazing to to them many times when they can go back and they can see where the uh, life of Jesus and his uh, purpose of coming and his. Um, resurrection or his death i should say it is um prophesied it in and many times i've used this scripture to share with them and then ask them who do you think that they're talking about and they'll say jesus and it's a, just a a sign that and, and 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 something that we should understand that the old testament and the new testament are not really two separate books okay they're they're, they are, but they're not. They're all one book because they're, the, the New Testament is only a continuation of, of the Old. Okay, a lot of people divide them into two. Why well, just read the New Testament? Why well, just read the Old Testament? But the Old and the New are were meant to be together because one is a continuation of the other. All right, so uh, when we get into the prophecies of Jesus, we're going to talk about it a little bit this evening, and we're going to go into Isaiah chapter 53. Now, there's many other areas where uh, the um, coming of Jesus Christ and the way that he is uh, uh, treated and how he's led to the cross and crucified and uh, and everything. There are so many different prophecies in other places in the Bible, but we're going to just focus right now on the book of Isaiah. So, before I open up in prayer, okay, we want to know the time, period of time that the book of Isaiah was written, okay? And so it was written about 700 or 750 years before Christ, okay, before his birth. So we're talking about really, really, folks, close to a thousand years before Jesus was even born, okay? These prophecies of Christ were already there. There's no one can can change that. People have tried. There have been people that have gone and they've tried to say, well, somehow the book of Isaiah must have been manipulated and maybe they did something to try to uh, uh, write it after the fact and insert it back in before to make it look like uh, it was a fulfillment of prophecy. But in reality, no, the uh, book of Isaiah, many believe was written by Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, um, and that, and that it was uh, uh, written uh, in um, uh, seven hundred between hundred seven hundred seven hundred fifty BC. Okay, so let's begin with a word of prayer, and we'll get into it from here. Uh, Father, I thank you so much for your opportunity to minister the Word of God today. Uh, Lord, I pray this evening, Lord, that you give me wisdom to bring your Word, and Father, that you will also. Um, give those that are listening, Lord, a spirit of understanding uh, and, and openness to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray and I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Well, I have to settle myself down here <sighs> as we get into this. Um, I, I just got back from fishing, just lost a huge fish. All right, I had him right in the, on the top of the water and, and he broke my line. And so I just got home, cleaned up, Washed my hands, ate real quick, ran in here, uh, and 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 decided to get ready. So, um, I'm ready to go, and I think we're gonna have a good uh, study this evening. So let's go ahead. I'm going to tonight. I'm going to 
probably, I think, read from the New King James Version only because I think it'll be a little bit easier um, for some of you to understand. But it reads essentially the same as the King, as the uh, 1611 King James. And uh, I'm, I'll, I'll refer to the 1611 King James in a, a couple of areas if I decide to, I want to show the prophecy and the fulfillment. I'm going to try to quote it to, is, in, in the places that I can and if you have uh, a pen and paper, you might want to take notes uh, uh, on this, okay? But um, let's begin with Isaiah 53, verse 1. And again, folks, I'm not here this evening to preach to you. So if you're looking for a preaching of a sermon saying, geez, he's not really preaching. No, I'm teaching, okay, tonight. So if you want to hear me preach, come on when I'm speaking at one of the other churches and you can hear me preach. But I, I really like to talk to people. I like to you know, minister to you. I like to see your comments. I try to read them when I can. I see there's one here now, uh, but I'm not able to uh, click onto that right right now and to, to respond to it. Um, but thank you for your uh, uh, comment, Pastor. I appreciate it. And um, we're going to go ahead and move forward now with this uh, message or, or with this teaching, okay? Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 1. And remember, the book was written almost a thousand years, about 700 to 750 years before Christ was even born, as far as we know, we, we're, we, we've experienced. Now, we know in, I, in God's eyes, it, would, it already occurred because the Lord says he was a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Even before anything began, God already knew it was going to take place, okay? But for our purposes, okay, it was 700 to 750 years before uh, the events actually took place, all right? So we'll begin, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Now we talk about Christ here. For he shall grow up before him, okay? That, this is the son of, shall grow up before the Father. When it says, He shall grow up before Him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. Remember that? That's a prophecy. Remember there was nothing about Him that anyone would really desire when they looked at Him. There wasn't, uh, He wasn't a real big tall guy, a real handsome uh or didn't walk around like The Rock or some some actors or, or I mean some actor or something like that. But uh, he was uh, an ordinary man by by all appearance, probably. Uh, and it says for um, he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Pretty average looking guy, I guess. He was despised. And rejected by men. Now again, we're talking about 700 years before this occurred. We know what happened to Jesus. Some people would like to say, well, you know, maybe he invented all these things and made these things happen 700 years after the fact. Well, folks, that's impossible. How can Jesus make everybody persecute him? How can he make himself um, to be of no significant form that anyone would desire him. I mean, some people are just born handsome. Some people are just born ugly. Some people are born average. He had no control over any of these things, okay? I mean, this was this was um, uh, 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 not self-fulfilled prophecy. It was fulfilled prophecy, okay? And 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 he was persecuted. He he didn't. Uh, go around seeking to be persecuted, but he brought the truth and the truth brought persecution to him, okay? So we see that um, he has no form of com of comeliness and we see, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. And listen to this, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. This is true about the Lord, folks. Remember the Bible says that uh, Christ was tempted in all ways and yet without sin. And that when we go through things ourselves, that we should remember that, the, that we, 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 we haven't gone through anything that he hasn't himself experienced or gone through. Uh, many times we think that we're unique in the, the, the um, tribulations and the things that happened to us. But folks, here it tells us again what we've read 
in other places, even in the New Testament and other places, that, okay, he, he was despised and rejected. We know that, that that occurred. They hated him. They rejected him. He was persecuted. He was crucified. It was the ultimate rejection. Okay? A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Absolutely he was. He understood it. He lived it. He walked it. It was not an easy thing to come down from heaven in the form of a man and be a man and yet be still be God and yet have to take that deity even then when you are deity and kind of set it aside in the sense that you're, you refuse to use it and you walk on the earth as a man. And uh, knowing that at any point in time he could have called 10,000 angels down and, and he could have taken the, the, the matters into his own hands as as God, but he was both God and man and he chose to walk on earth as a man and yet through that accomplish total victory over Satan, which is just powerful if you really stop and think about it, okay? Because we know that that's true because when Jesus prayed, he prayed to the Father, didn't he? He didn't pray to himself. He prayed to the Father, okay? Um, so anyway, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him or appreciate him or or, or, or value him. That he was despised. There was nothing about him that uh, was... Um, uh, compelling maybe on the outward surface surface of things where you would want to uh be hang, hang out with him or be known by him or associate with them it was really a spiritual thing and you had to know who he was or have a a revelation of of of, of who he really was but many people didn't okay so from the outward appearance of things there was nothing special from the outside about him okay Surely he has borne our griefs, okay? When you go through things, sometimes remember he's borne your grief. The things that you go through, he knows. He does understand. Um, sometimes we go through things and we wonder, no, folks, he, he knows, okay? And he carried, he carried our sorrows. You notice that this is in the uh, past tense. Surely he has borne, has, Born our grief, and carried, i.e.d., carried our sorrows. Okay, this is not just something that we know that when we go through things that Jesus will do. Folks, this is something he has already done. And this is why the word of the cross, the message of the cross, understanding that the true gospel is about the cross, why this, while this is so important to us, we have to be able to appropriate what Christ has done on the cross. And what did he do? He he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He did many things were accomplished on the cross that if we appropriate them through faith, we can begin to walk and, and, and experience victory in our lives now. Okay, I hope that you're hearing me and that you're, you're understanding the message that I'm bringing in this study this evening, okay? <clears throat> Yet, we esteemed him stricken smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace, the punishment, okay, for our peace was upon him. Because he died, we can live. That's what, what, what this is saying, okay? The chastisement for our peace, the punishment for our peace, okay, fell upon him or was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Okay, it's a fact. We're healed today because of the stripes that Jesus bore yesterday. And for some of that, when we believe in healing, there are many types of healings. There are healings that come from our emotions or healings that uh, are, are, are come out of a uh, breaking of, of 
bondages. Uh, there are physical healings from illnesses and sickness. So, and we can appropriate those. And sometimes we see the, um, uh, excuse me, we see the manifestation of that immediately. And other times we, we see it progressively, but it's, it's, it, it is done and we appropriate it by faith. Okay? Now, he goes on to say, uh, and, and we like sheep, okay, that's us, have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord, speaking of the Father now, has laid on him, on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. Jesus Christ bore our sins, folks, okay? Now, again, you know this by fact today, but remember, we're reading something 700 years before it occurred. This is the prophecy of of this. Jesus was prophesied. It was prophesied that he would would be wounded for our transgressions. It was prophesied that he would be smitten by God and afflicted. It was prophesied that he would bear our griefs and carry our sorrows. It was prophesied that the punishment of for our peace would be upon him. It was prophesied that by his stripes that we are healed. Okay? It was prophesied that like sheep we would all go astray and that every one of us would turn to his own way. And it was prophesied that the Lord Father, God the Father would lay upon his Son, upon this Son Jesus Christ, the iniquity of all of us. It was prophesied, okay? The Word says that he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Folks, it was prophesied that he would be oppressed and that he would be afflicted. Again, we're quoting from something that occurred 700 years before it actually happened, okay? He was oppressed and he was afflicted. It was prophesied, yet he opened not his mouth. It was prophesied that he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. It was prophesied, and as a sheep before its shears, he was silent. Okay, we know, we, when we go back into the New Testament, we read that he uttered not a word in his defense. Okay? He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. He, he didn't have to go. He could have fought back. You know, lambs don't fight. They, they go with you. And he, he, he went willingly and, and voluntarily. And what we're reading in the book of Isaiah, 700 years before, it was prophesied that he would do these things, folks. This is powerful if you get this. I don't know how you can read this and just go, hmm, ho, hum. If you read this in the present tense, you're saying, oh, yeah, 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 we know that ha- that happened. We know that happened. Because we're looking from where we're at today in the 20th to 21st century, we're looking back at what we know occurred, okay, what we believe occurred. But what we're reading hadn't even happened yet. What we're reading hadn't even happened yet. And it was written 750 years prior to the occurrence. That's powerful. Okay. So, it was prophesied so he opened not his mouth. Verse 8. I'm always going to say, I think before, it was prophesied so you'll get this. Okay. It was prophesied that he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generations? For he was, it was prophesied that he would be cut off from the land of the living. Cut off. Taken away. Sacrificed. Killed before his time, so to speak. Okay, he was cut off from the land of the living. Why? It was prophesied. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. For the transgression of God's people, Jesus Christ was stricken. That is what the word of God is saying. In verse 9, okay, it was prophesied in Isaiah that they made his grave with the wicked. He was taken up to uh, Golgotha to be crucified, and and it was fully intended. Once you're dumped, you're thrown into the potter's field and places like that that were just uh, the wicked were thrown and buried. The nobodies of the world that nobody even knew they were, they, they buried them in certain places, the Galgotha was called the place of the skull, 
they were taken up there, crucified, and basically just uh, buried there. Okay, that was his assignment. Okay, they had made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich man at his death. I think it's interesting if we go to um, the uh, book of Matthew and we read chapter, um, I believe it's chapter 27, yeah, verse 57. We can kind of see the fulfillment of just that. And when evening had was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and begged for the body of Jesus, and then Pilate commanded the body be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and he laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. Okay, so we see right there, I, I, I just read to you I, in one book here, okay, the book of Isaiah, 700 years before, where it tells us, okay, that and they made a grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, and then I, I go into the King James Version and go into the New Testament and show you the fulfillment of that. Okay, so we again see uh, just just one of one of all of these. All of this was prophecy in fulfillment. But here, here I, I I just take you from the Old Testament to the New Testament in one area that probably everybody's familiar with, and and, and just sh and show that to you. Okay, so you can see it for yourself. Okay. Um, so they said that uh, he uh, in verse nine, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Isn't that true? He 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 didn't hurt anybody, um, and there was no deceit in his mouth. He always spoke the truth. He is truth. Okay, and uh, verse ten. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Okay, he, 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 he was bruised. I always think about the situation in uh, the book of in Genesis where the serpent says that uh, the, the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you shall, your head shall bruise their feet, her feet. And it was uh, in reference to Christ, uh, okay, that would one day come and, 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 and Satan would be, would be defeated uh, through Christ. And here we see it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Jesus, again, you know, the, uh, the, the bruising took place because he, he crushed and defeated Satan by stepping on his head through the crucifixion, okay? That's probably the best way that, that I can put it so you would understand that, okay? So it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, he, he has put him, God the Father has put the Son to grieve. When you make his soul, when you, the Father, make him, Jesus, his, Jesus, his soul, an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, okay? In other words, that, that's something that Christ is going to see his seed, or, and, and the Father will see the seed of, of Christ and what he's done because of, of, of going, his going to the cross. He's... Um, brought forth many other sons to birth. We're, we're also, son. he is the son of God. We are sons of God uh, with him. And we are his fellow brethren, as, 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 as the Bible says. Okay? And um, so it says, he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper his hand. This is uh, the, the, the presence, uh, the, the pleasure of the Father shall prosper the hands of, 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 of the Lord Jesus. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Okay, again, it is prophesied that Jesus will bear their iniquities. 700 years before it ever actually occurred, it was prophesied in the book of Isaiah, and it comes to fruition you know, uh, 700, 750 years later. 
Okay. Um, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. In other words, we're the strong because we've accepted him. We've become victorious. We're made victorious in Christ. So the Lord will divide the spoil of everything. We inherit his kingdom. We're, we, you know, sometimes we consider ourselves weak, but no, when we're weak, we're strong. Okay, and so we are the strong. Who is the strong that we're, that, that we're being talked about? It's you and it's me. All right, and so I think that's pretty cool, pretty powerful. It says, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors. Isn't that true? They considered him a transgressor. He was numbered with them. He died, what? With the, th- with the, the, the thieves, one on the left, one on the right. He was numbered with the transgressors. Another prophecy being fulfilled. He was considered a transgressor. They, only the worst of the worst, the, the criminals, uh, that, you know, they were taken to Golgotha to, the, uh, to be crucified, okay, to the place of the skull. And we already talked about how it was prophesied that he, he would, his grave was, would be assigned to the wicked, but he would be buried by Joseph of Arimathea by, by, uh, by that of a rich man, Arimathea, okay? And uh, all of that again here in Isaiah 53 is prophesied. This chapter is probably one of the greatest chapters in the prophecies of Jesus Christ. There are many others. Maybe I'll have a chance to get to some of the other ones too. But I wanted to start with this one because it's one of the most, uh, the whole book is devoted to it, really. Okay, and so um, let's, let's continue. Uh, Therefore I will divide him, verse uh, 12, a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Do you know, the Bible says that. Uh, we see it in the New Testament where Paul says that Christ, I believe it's Paul, but uh, certainly uh, one of the apostles said that he ever liveth to make intercession for us. We're the transgressors, right? And Christ ever liveth now, even in the heavens, to make intercession for us. Okay, and of course, the, the right before that, the scriptures tell us that he bore the sins of many. And you may want to write down where it says he made intercession for the transgressors. We see that in Luke 23, verse 24. Um, we also uh, see it in Romans 8, 34, and in Romans 9, 24. Okay, he bore the sins of many, and he made the inter- intercession for the transgressors. And when it says he was numbered with the transgressors, we see that in Mark chapter 15, verse 28, and Luke chapter 22, verse 37, okay? Um, when it talks about he shall divide the spoil with the strong, we see the fulfillment of that in, in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 15. Uh, Therefore, I will divide him uh, uh, a portion with the great. We see that in Psalms 2, uh, verse 8, in Philippians uh, 2, verse 9. Um, uh, Let me see. Because his knowledge, uh, my righteous servant, oh, I'm sorry, by his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. We see that in 2 Peter uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 3, uh, verse 11. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. We see that in Romans chapter 5, verses 18 through 19. Okay, um, let's continue a little bit. I'm going to you just, if you said, wait a minute, Misha, I can't write that fast, okay? That's fine. You get to listen to this because after I'm done, it's still here. So if you want to go back and look some of this stuff up, by all means, you can go back and listen again, okay? And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. We can see that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse uh, 5 and verse 9. He shall see his seed, in other words, God the Father shall see the seed of the Son. He shall prolong his days. Romans chapter 6, verse 9. Um, verse, let's look at verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. 
when you make his soul an offering for sin. We see that in 2 Corinthians 5.21 and 1 Peter 2.24. It, it, there, there are references to, to that. And of course, I've already read, to, given to you, verse 9, and, and they made his grave with the wicked. Okay, we see that in Matthew uh, 27.57, uh, Matthew 27.58, and Matthew twenty seven sixty, okay. So again, there these are some areas that there's fulfillment. Let me, I could just keep on going. Um, there are other references to the prophecy about uh, in verse eight he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. You might want to look at Daniel chapter nine, verse twenty six. Um, let's see, verse, um, mm, let me see. Okay, how about, uh, how about, uh, mm, how about verse five? Okay, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Well, we see that, and uh, we see Rome, uh, a reference to this in Romans chapter 4, 25, and in the book of one, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, uh, uh, verse 4, um, well, you know, surely born our griefs, carried our sorrows. Um, we know that that occurred by just going and reading all of the, uh, the, the Gospels, okay? Um, verse 3, he is despised and rejected by men, a man of uh, sorrows and acquainted with grief. Hebrews chapter 14, uh, verse 15 uh, talks about that. And it goes on to say, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. We didn't value him uh, or anything. And that is, uh, we can refer to that, see fulfillment in uh, John uh, chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. Okay, and um, all of the, all of, for, of, of uh, chapter 53 tells so much about the, uh, the, uh, suffering uh, servant about Jesus Christ. Um, and you could actually, let me see here. Uh, we could actually go back and actually read more, but, but I'm not going to do that. Um, what I like to do, and this is a, a good key to you folks, if uh, you run across a, a somebody and they're Jewish and you, 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 may feel intimidated because you think, oh my gosh, they're Jews, they're God's people. They may know the word of God better than I do. Things like that. Folks, I'm, I'm a born Jew, okay? Um, I, I immigrated to this country um, at the age of three. All right, and my family is Jewish. We became Christians when I was about 12 years old. Um, and so I understand what the Jews think okay the orthodox and there are there are messianic jews in 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 israel that believe jesus is the messiah there are others that are more moderate say jewish by name but they don't really practice the religion and you have orthodox jews that are very much uh uh they they practice the letter or letter of the law as, as absolutely uh, as much as possible now okay and many times when i get into have the opportunity to talk and to share with other Jews. I always like to point them to Isaiah 53, and we'll go right through, and I'll just read it to them, and I'll ask them, who do you think Isaiah was talking about? And they'll, they'll many of them will say, sounds like Jesus. And I say, isn't that something? 750 years before it even happened, here it is in your book. Because, see, they read the Torah, they read the, 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 old, the old Testament, um, and that's their own. That is their Bible, okay. Along with um, uh, other other writings by priests and and things like that, where they give their uh, references and interpretations and things of that nature. But um, but um, this, when you read it to the Jew, a lot of times really will get them to thinking. Okay, and then when you show it to them in the New Testament and show the fulfillment of all that, they understand that there's no way Jesus could have fulfilled all these things by himself and made himself persecuted and made himself crucified. And, and, and we can go into the book of Psalm 
uh, also where he says, uh, we, you know, my, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And many other things. And, that, and, and it goes through the whole cross process and everything. And there's so many other scriptures in the um, Old Testament or the Old Covenant that deal with that. And again, as I said at the beginning, the Old Testament and the New Testament are not really two separate books. They are in your Bible. And of, of course, we know them as the Old Testament and the New Testament. But it's the Old Covenant and New Covenant. And one is actually a continuation of the other. Okay, so it's it's very appropriate that we have the Old and the New, okay, in, 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 one, in one book, the Bible. Okay, and so... Um, I, I hope that today this is kind of uh, just kind of whet your appetite a little bit for Bible prophecy. There's so much more. I mean, we could get into the, uh, the I, I could go in and show you what was prophesied that the Jews would re, would be dispersed and then generations later would be returned and a nation would be born one day and they would return and become the nation of Israel again, which happened in 1948. Um, we could talk about the uh, prophecies of uh, uh, Armageddon and various things that are, some things that are yet to be fulfilled, but right on the verge of, of, of occurring. Um, there's There are so many things in the Word of God that the Old Testament and the Old Covenant really does point to the New. And we just need to be aware. And I sometimes think we're in this state of slumber. We're not. We we should be looking at this. I really think that. Uh, <clears throat> and it's interesting when people don't know about Christ, and when I minister to other Jews, and I begin to show them the prophecies of Christ, and then show them in the New Testament where it took place, and they're just awed and amazed. How, how come nobody ever showed me this? Why didn't we see it? And it makes me a little bit sad because as Christians, because we already know that these prophecies were fulfilled, we already know what happened. We know everything in the New Testament that occurred, but many times we don't go back and see where it was actually prophesied that it would happen. But the one, But those of us that do and that have heard it all our lives, have a tendency to take something that is just astronomically incredible, okay? We take it for granted, um, and we shouldn't. You know, we really, really have no excuse for unbelief. Um, so this was a little bit of a, uh, uh, an ac academic study, but one where I kind of wanted to consider my audience this evening and measure carefully my words, not out of concern of offending, but making sure that each person understood if I had to go back a little bit and reiterate something and I'll stammer my way through it a little bit to try to just uh, go back. I didn't have it pre-rehearsed. I wasn't in a preaching flow uh, today but more just a thing of just trying to teach and, and show you and just kind of just, you know, kind of go with the flow, I guess, if you, for lack of any better way of putting it, just kind of take it a step by step and go back over some things in this way and that way and just kind of make sure that you got it all, okay, and, and everything. And so I, I hope that this was a blessing for you today. I, I came in, like I said, I was out fishing um, this evening and I lost just a huge fish. Just when I told my my wife when I came home, lovely, I said, this is the first time I lost a fish and almost cried because he was so big and such, such a beautiful fish, man. I had him and he broke my line right when I was, you know, bringing him in. And um, that that's the third time in a row. It, <laughs> no, almost the third time in a row it happened to me. And today I just thought, oh my God, I I I I almost felt like crying. <laughs> but I came in, uh, ate my dinner, uh, prayed, and I said, Lord, what is it that you want to talk of me to talk about today? And the Lord just spoke to me. Why don't you share a little bit on the prophecies 
the amazing prophecies of Jesus. And I thought, wow, you know what? That would be good. Why don't we do that? So we just touched on it, folks. This is just the beginning, okay? If you think we got a lot today, folks, you hadn't seen nothing yet, okay? And so maybe um, next week uh, I'll have a chance to continue it. I'll have to just see how the Lord leads. He may lead me to go that way, or he may uh, have me go a different direction, uh, but we'll 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 see what the Lord wants to do. Okay, so um, again, I want to thank everybody for uh, signing in today. I want to close this with prayer, but before I uh, do close, I want to remind everyone, please do me a favor, folks, okay? Hit the like button, okay, and hit the share. I have so many people that watch, and they don't like, you know, they don't like the message. It's not because they hate the message. They just don't, they, they see it, and they just don't bother to hit the like. <laughs> but um, I, I get sometimes hundreds of people that actually watch these, and, and, and sometimes seven or eight likes. And, and uh, they, they, they watch them, they just hit, forget to hit them. And then I get, I'm getting some pretty good shares. I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm not looking for the one person that will hit the share button 25 times. Although that's good, that's fine, I'll take it. But I, I want every individual to share because all of you have friends on your Facebook page that I just will not have the opportunity to minister to on a one-on-one -on -one basis probably or in any church uh, uh, here. Uh, I, although I speak in a lot of places and you can help me, okay? Because if you'll hit your share button then you probably got a whole bunch of friends that I'm not gonna talk to that can listen to this and maybe it will uh, strike a, a note in their heart or, 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 or stir up uh, the hunger in them to maybe make a decision or a recommitment with the Lord, or um, or, or, or or quicken them and, and strengthen their faith. Maybe there's some that are going through a lot of things right now and uh, are not seeing just the awesomeness of the God we serve. I just think it's powerful, folks. You know, I always preach a lot. When I preach, I, I talk about Buddha, and I talk about Muhammad, and I talk about Krishna, and, and so many of the others, so-called gods and philosophies, by gods, you know, the Buddhism is a philosophy, it's a religion, whereas, you know, uh, Krishna and uh, uh, um, some of the others, um, uh, Muhammad, uh, they, they, they're, they're supposedly forms of, of, of deity and, and, and things of that nature. And there are so many people out there worshiping these so-called gods and their, their precepts and their philosophies. But folks, all of those people are dead, okay? They're in the grave and they never rose from it. But as Christians, we're very unique because we are the one religion out of all of them that claims to uh, serve a risen God, a God uh, the, that uh, the, uh, that was sacrificed through Jesus, uh, the, the, the Son, for our sins, but rose from the dead, and that is, it sits at the right hand of the Father and is alive today. So we serve a living God, not one that's already dead and buried six feet under somewhere, okay? But he's alive, and, and that's important because some of you are going through things right now, and you need a living God, not a dead God, and not uh, the, the uh, writings of somebody that told you how to do it and it didn't work because they're still down, they're way down in, in the ground somewhere and only God knows in, in, in eternity, I don't think they were, they're in heaven, but, um, you know, uh, only God knows what happens before a person, you know, breathes their last, last breath, but, um, you know, enough said about that, okay, um, so anyway, uh, we're going to close it with prayer right now and um, I want to uh, encourage you um, uh, to during these times that we're in, to just really keep your focus and, and really w walk with the Lord. Um, tomorrow is tomorrow Thursday. Today is Tuesday. No, the day after tomorrow, um, I should be in uh, California. I'll be teaching um, the uh, out of the Desert Center School of Ministry out there for pastors uh, and, and ministers, new pastors. Uh, also, and uh, it's a pastor's school, actually. And so um, I'll be teach doing that on Thursday. And then this coming Sunday, I believe I'll be back there again uh, Sunday morning to uh, actually bring their message for their worship service. Um, and 
So right now in, in, in California, I'm ministering at uh, Set Free in Menifee, Set Free in Desert Center. And then we go up to Victorville and minister to um, Hope of a Higher Glory Community Church. That's a non-denominational church. And um, we're doing our ministry with them online right now because they are in the process of building a sanctuary. They purchased, uh, I think, 10 acres of land or, or more. I don't, I don't know. And uh, it's it's a lot of land, and they're they're building a uh, uh, they're they're plowing out the ground now and putting in roads and doing what they need to, and then the sanctuary will be up. And then pretty soon we'll be out there again. And I've gotten invitations <laughs> from two or three other churches in California that want me to come and minister to them. I'm here, I'm living here in Yuma, Arizona now, um, so I'm still not I'm not speaking at any of the churches out here in Yuma yet because I haven't had the time to do it. I've been busy traveling back to California, but you know the Apostle Paul headquartered in Jerusalem, but he went to Antioch and he went to Ephesus and he went to Rome and a lot of other places, and that's just the way God has kind of set up our ministry too. We seem to travel around a lot to to, to speak, and here at home is where I have my time to go to church, and uh, when there's nothing going on, I can just sit back and uh, uh, kind of get refilled and. This is where I do my writing and write my books, and I'm on number three right now. I, I spent quite a few hours on it uh, today, uh, uh, and uh, it's it's my base of operation, I guess, if you want to put it that way. And I know that God is going to open up some things here in Yuma, too. I'm talking to the brethren at uh, Set Free Ministries, and uh, working hard. I'm trying very hard to get a Set Free Church positioned here in Yuma, Okay, so that we have a place where the homeless and the drug addict and the person that's just been released from prison um, and, and the person that's going through emotional and mental problems and some medication in places, the, the one that doesn't have anywhere to go, the destitute, the people that have been uh, castaways and cast off, a place where they can go. And, and I, folks, I have preached in these places and I have seen people healed. I have seen miracles happen in these churches and I in one thing I see in Yuma to the best of my knowledge there is no there are no victory outreach here I think there used to be one don't think there is one now maybe I'm wrong about that I don't know I'm new, I'm new here but I don't think there is I don't think there's a teen challenge here I know there's no set free here folks we need to get something going here in Yuma and I'm working on doing that okay and I will work with these brethren to bring a church to Yuma that's what one of my top priorities right now so that we can get the people that are sleeping in parks and homeless places and other places into a program, get them filled with the gospel, get them moving in the ministry, get them into pastor school and ministry school, and then send them out uh, into the world to go ahead and do the same and bring other people back in. And uh, so I'm, I'm really uh, hoping that this is something you'll be praying with me about and uh, that we can get that done. All right, so I'm I, I'm not part of the set free ministries, folks. I'm ordained by the independent by the uh, 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 independent assemblies of God International. Okay, um, that's who I'm ordained with. But I minister with set free, so I'm accepted by them, and and, and God has given me some influence. Um, so uh, I'm I'm going to use the most I can, and I'm I, I try to get those pastors and those that have that influence to use it to try to help. And I'm really really trying hard to get something over here in Yuma. And I I I believe in the realm of spirit, whether I'm I, I'm a, a a big part of it or not. I believe I just believe God is going to break that thing open, and something is going to happen. And I've offered my help to at least some of the churches where I speak, if they send some of their new pastors over here to Yuma, that I will go ahead and assist them there and uh, or, or here and and help them in their ministry and in their teaching and so forth and so on. So there's a lot of cool things going on. And, and so let's, uh, let's wrap it up. I've kept you long enough. Let's wrap it up. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity to bring your um, teaching this evening. I pray, Lord, that it'll be a blessing to everyone. That that's heard it, and uh, that you'll seal it to their spirits in Jesus' name, and I thank you for it, Amen. All right, so, so folks, uh, in these places, I'm going to be uh, Thursday and Sunday. I will broadcast uh, live on Facebook here. Um, uh, it'll be 
um, Thursday um, at 6 o'clock West Coast time, which will be 7 o'clock here in Yuma. And um, on um, Sunday at 10 a.m. West Coast time and 11 a.m. Mountain time here in Yuma. And I'll be broadcasting those services uh, live on Facebook. Um, and uh, so, you know, feel free to you know, tune in and join us if you're not going anywhere else on that particular day or in those particular times, okay? So, you know what I always say, folks, okay? Keep your feet on the ground. Keep your head to the sky. I'll see you next Tuesday night. God bless you, and have a nice evening. Bye-bye.